Hey what's up guys, this is Fatal Cubes here. In this video we are going to be fixing one thing in the score manager class as well as creating a whole new class called the leaderboards. So before I explain what the leaderboards class does, let's just add this in here. I forgot to make it so that it loads back in your game. So we have to create a string array to hold um, reader dot lag okay reader dot read line and we're gonna split on the dash so this will split up that uh, uh, thing we created up here where we write all the scores down and separate them by dashes this will take that whole line apart into an array of strings then we have to go through and parse all those strings so for int i equals zero i is less than four dot line. Okay, we should say this dot board at i equals integer dot parsint board at i. Uh, yep. So this will get the board. It'll get uh, all the numbers. There should be 16 things in this array as long as the board stays 4 by 4. And then it should go in and set each position of the game board array to... Uh, this variable up here. All right, now what is the leaderboards? So the point of the leaderboards class is to separate high scores from current scores. So the score manager's job is to save the game continuously and to write to a temporary file that'll get deleted once the game ends. The file, of course, will then get recreated each time a new game is started. But ultimately, those scores don't save. They have to be saved somewhere else in a permanent file. This is going to be the leaderboard's job is going to be to save to this file. And it's going to kind of be like a static class because there's really only one leaderboard per game. So go ahead and create a new class and call it leaderboards. Now the leaderboards class is very similar to the score manager and how it loads and stuff. So it's going to be sort of a repeat. You guys could probably figure this out. Um, again, we're going to have a file path and uh, another string, uppercase S, high scores. Okay, this is the all time leaderboards right here. Leaderboards. So we need three array lists, one called top scores, one called top tiles, uh, your best tiles, and one called top times. Import array list and let's move on to the constructor. The constructor will be um, will be private. But we are actually going to put things in the constructor because the one time that this it's not a static class, my bad. It's actually going to be a singleton class. Uh, so there will be one instance of leaderboards in the game. Anyways, we're going to set the file path equal to new file. The same trick we did in the score manager class. Dot, whoops. Dot get absolute path. New file dot dot get absolute path all right let's add a catch statement exception e e dot print stack trace let me just try something out here all right that's what i thought my bad the reason i had to try catch there was from a different way of loading in of getting the file path which does require your try catch this way it actually doesn't so we are not going to use a try catch. High scores, that string that we created is going to be set to scores. Top scores equals new array list. Let's instantiate all of the uh, array lists. And then we're going to load in all the files. 
So let's just do this. And this is gonna be top tiles and top times. All right. Because this is a singleton class, we gotta have the standard get instance method. If L board equals null, then L board L board equals new leader boards. And then return L board. Alright, there we go. Moving right along. So now that we've uh, loaded in our class, we have our array list set up. We're going to actually need to um, create three methods for adding new scores to the leaderboards. This will be handled by the game class itself, uh, the game board. Uh, we have an add score method that takes in an integer of what score you're going to add. We're going to have uh, two more methods called add tile. That's going to be a tile, tile value. And we're going to have one that's a uh, long and it's going to be milliseconds for add time. All right, add score. We're simply going to go through our, um, we're simply going to go through four into i equals zero. I is less than top scores dot size I plus plus if score is greater than or equal to top scores dot get I then we are going to do top scores dot add I score top scores dot remove top scores dot get size minus one so this will add in uh, dot size minus one so what this will do is it's going to go through and if you have a high score that should be in the list it'll take the it'll add it there in that position pushing all the elements back one and then it'll just remove the last element at the very end so we can copy this for add tile Except we're gonna have top tiles, tile value, top tiles, uh, tile value, just like that. All right. Uh, one last thing is you have this is actually really important. You have to put in a return met, uh, return statement at the remove because what would happen is what if you got a high score that beats all your other scores? It would add it in five times because it would add it in, get rid of the last one, loop through. Okay, it's still greater than or equal to. Add it in, loop through, and it would end up creating five copies of that same score. So we have to return out of the method after that happens. All right, add time. It's a little different, same uh, structure. So I is less than top times dot size. I plus plus. If the millis is less than or equal to top times dot get I. So now we're checking if it's less than or equal to, then we're gonna do top times dot add I millis top times dot remove top times dot size minus one like I said same general principle there alright now we gotta get to loading and saving again this is very similar to our score manager class so I'm gonna go through pretty fast um, let me just check this out yeah it's very very similar So essentially we're gonna create three rows of five scores each for each one. So load scores. We're just gonna wrap the entire thing in a try catch. And because we suck at uh, handling exceptions, we'll just do we'll just print the stack trace, nothing nothing fancy there. Uh, we're gonna get the file equals new file 
at biopath high scores. If f isn't a file, then we need to create the save data. Again, this is a very similar. All right, now we have to create a buffered reader to go through and read each line. Buffered reader, new input stream, reader, new file input stream, F. So this is a long chain of code that you could put on multiple lines. Essentially creates a buffered reader from the file F throughout all, the, all of this. Alright, every time we load the scores, we have to make sure that we clear previous scores. Create a new string array to hold each of the ones. So scores are going to be equal to reader dot read line dot split on the dash. So this is essentially going to be pretty much the exact same as what we did at the beginning of this video on the score manager. We're going to create an array to hold it. We're going to go through and parse each individual one. So uh, let's do this. Tiles. We could even create a small method. Uh, you could, if you want, to do this for you so that there's no uh, repeated code, basically the exact same. But I don't think that's really necessary for such a small case like this. I is less than scores.length. Okay, so we're going to iterate through scores. And we might as well create this for loop for everything. Tiles times. Okay, and here we're gonna go top scores dot add integer dot parse int scores at i. Right, this exact same line is uh, gonna apply down here to tiles. Uh, top tiles. This is going to be essentially the same, except it's going to be parsing along. So we're just going to long dot parse long at times i. Cause scores can be longer, especially in milliseconds. Uh, it's going to be longer. Oh, whoops! Well, it turns out I was being stupid, and uh, uh, our array list has to be in uh, has to be long. So change those two cases for the times. You have to use long variables because times are milliseconds. And you're always better safe than sorry. Memory is really not an issue in this scenario. And close the reader. All right, that is essentially our load method. So if you guys can remember, we got to create the save data and save scores. So let's go ahead and do the save scores while we're here. Public void save scores. All right. First, we're going to create a file writer. Set it equal to null. Surround it in a try catch. Again, lame uh, file handling. All this you guys could probably figure out on your own. There's really nothing, nothing crazy here. Um, what you should get away from this video is how I'm setting up the leaderboards versus the score manager and how they are different and how they shouldn't, how you shouldn't be saving the high scores every time you say whoops, every time you save the game. So uh, we should have a separate file that only needs to get saved to at the end of the game. Okay, now we're gonna have to write three things that are basically the exact same. So we're gonna write top scores dot get zero and then plus the dash. You can copy that essentially. 
just do uh, plus 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 and then add close that at the end format one two three four just make sure you don't have the hyphen at the very end it should be nothing there copy this paste that down it changes the top tiles copy paste 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 again this is another instance where you could do a small method to loop through and essentially do this for you but I don't need to in between these create a new line copy paste and writer dot close. That's your save method right there. So that's gonna essentially loop through, not really loop through, but it's gonna go ahead and add each score from your best score to your worst score and separate them with dashes so that for loading back in it's very easy to do. Now the last method we need to create is the create save data. Oh, whoops, create save data. So this is just going to essentially do this, but instead of using variables, we're just going to put in zeros. So actually, I'm going to be lazy and copy all this. All right. So instead of doing this, we're going to create file f equals new file. That that that. We're going to create an output. But instead of all this, we're just going to write. like that. Now because I'm very picky about how this all works, um, you obviously don't want your top five times to all be zeros, so I'm going to set them to the max limit they can be. Very simple. Do integer dot max value. Again, you could do, you could be uh, even more crazy and do long dot max value, but I think that's just such a huge number. The reason I actually don't pick it is because it doesn't fit very well on the screen. So just go ahead and do two, three, four, five, format, and there you go. That is your create save data method. That was actually pretty fast, uh, faster than I thought it'd be. And to conclude this video, I know this has been really boring, this code, but I think that it's essential that uh, this is this is saw uh, you're able to see this um, a lot of people like to you know show you how to create the game but they leave out some of the things that goes on behind the scenes like how you actually do the specifics of saving files and GUI and all that's why I'm primarily making this series is for you guys to see what uh, goes into making uh, the GUI and saving and loading probably in my next series I won't go into such detail with this specific matter because I'll be focusing on other things and I actually do have an exciting series, at least for me, that will be coming out after this. And you guys will have to see what that is when it comes out. Anyways, we're going to create a few getters that are just going to return the high scores. Very simple. Just uh, we're going to get the first element in each array. Because by doing, by doing so... And we don't, we're going to create one public uh, and get uh, highest high tile. We'll just call it that. Return top tiles dot get zero. Uh, then let's create getters for these. So we can even do the source, generate getters and setters. We're going to do top tiles, top all that stuff we're gonna do it at the very end and you select getters my bad just do these we'll get rid of all the setters we only want getters because we want people to be able to get these rays but we don't want anyone else to be able to write to them so setting should all be done And that concludes this video. So if you have any questions about the video, please post them in the comment section. I'd be happy to 
um, answer your questions. I hope you understand what this class does. And you should also understand that it is very similar to Score Manager. Now, if you do look at this, you might say, wow, they are very similar. Um, maybe you could create a class that they both extend from or implement, such as like, uh, you know, file writable or something like that. And it could have methods such as load, save, and um, create, save. And you could do all that. I think it's simpler in this situation to just have two separate files since there's not many files that we need to load and save to. And if you guys enjoy the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel to see, uh, to get updated when new videos come out and like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, that's fine with me. Don't like the video, but please post in the comments why. Uh, that always helps me out. Anyways, whoops. See you guys in the next video. Bye.